Johnson from the ASU Art Museum Ceramics Research Center, and it is my distinct pleasure to uh, present this honorary and SICA member award for Clayton Bailey, the greatest living conceptual ceramic artist ever. So, um, Clayton Bailey is surely one of the few NSICA members who has a patent under his belt uh, for this uh, vessel that is designed to squirt water into the user's uh, face among his many, many innovations. And I definitely would be remiss not to mention Clayton's alter ego, Dr. Gladstone, who often shows up in place of him uh, to receive awards or to talk about uh, uh, Clayton and Dr. Gladstone's scientific research. And here's Dr. Gladstone with a great Kaolithic discovery. Uh, this is a Bigfoot skeleton, but a rare one because the triple jointed penis bone is intact. <laughs> and so th for those of you who have seen this Kaolithic uh, um, Bigfoot before, uh, Dr. Gladstone surmised that the reason that Bigfoot died off is this very tri uh, triple jointed uh, penis bone because it bends back upon itself and is uh, very non-functional. <laughs> there are so many things that I could focus on for Clayton's work, but I wanted to focus in on the many, many, many contributions that he has made to Inseca over the years. So what follows is exclusively going to be within the, the realm of the Inseca, uh, and I would be remiss uh, in not including his closing lecture for the Houston Enseca in this, which is one of the single greatest lectures to be delivered on the Enseca stage. Uh, so starting in Madison in 1974, and this is just going to show you Clayton's contributions to Enseca during the 70s. So in Mad Madison in 1974, uh, Clayton presented a very specific line of research that he has been, had been conducting at the time, which was the invention of self-firing clay. Uh, if this gives you any indication, it was a mixture, mixture of clay and horse manure, uh, and uh, when lit on fire, uh, would be able to sort of fire itself. And in some of my research, I ran into a very straight-faced article to the American Craft Council's Craft Horizons magazine detailing his process that somehow made it past the BS detector of the uh, editors. And here are some of the apparatus for firing the uh, self-combusting ceramics. So one of my very favorites, and Clayton, there was no gag, no prank, no demonstration that was too elaborate for Clayton. Uh, this is, can I get a show of hands, was anyone in the room for the display of psychic ceramics at the Niagara Falls in Sika? So uh, I was not there, I was one year old uh, at the time, but to paraphrase, uh, Clayton, Clayton constructed an apparatus that consisted of a potter's wheel, and at the time, he was working a lot in latex, making latex sculptures. So he made a latex blob of clay that was sort of in the shape of a pot and connected it to some sneaky compressed air that ran out of the room. Uh, he covered the whole thing in slip, put on the sunglasses, and without laying hands on the potter's wheel, made the clay magically rise. Uh, he had also arranged uh, for someone to hit him, hit, hit him in the face with a uh, pie uh, afterwards to uh, ex expose his hokum. Another thing that I wish that I could have seen, uh, I think when I was two years old, um, this is the psychic, or, I'm sorry, the compression strength of classical ceramics. I think it goes down in the annals as one of the single greatest presentations to happen, I think, for the opening of Inseca. So uh, Clayton underwent extensive negotiations with a range of museums asking if they could borrow their priceless Ming vases, Kangxi vases, and ceramics to put them in an apparatus that would test their com compression strength and would measure up until the point when it shattered them to bits. Uh, museum guards brought out all of the pieces. Uh, there was a machine that made lots of smoke and lots of noise. And he got some interesting letters, like this one from the director of the Nelson Atkins, uh, saying that under no condition would they uh, loan them 
a uh, priceless Ming vase to be destroyed in the compression testing. And here are a couple of great black and white images from the newsletter. And another. Uh, Clayton has had many partners in crime over the years. One of my favorite, very favorites is Victor Spinsky. Uh, Victor and, and Clayton could create a lot of mayhem. Uh, of course, uh, Victor, who passed several years ago, had served in Vietnam and was an explosives and ordnance expert. Um, so uh, my uh, the people who've told me this story, it sort of uh, varies, but this was uh, a lecture on uh, ceramics, great potential for uh, mischief. And he was talking about his self-combusting clay and did a demonstration with it, uh, followed by um, clay mixed with Limburger cheese, supposedly exploding into the audience, uh, upon which point Clayton and Victor disappeared, only to reappear at the closing party in semi-body casts. There's an image of the self-combusting ceramics and the bare hands raccoon. <laughs> um, one thing that I'd like to mention, and I'm about to wrap up after showing a little bit of video, um, is Clayton's love of performance. So anyone who has seen Clayton Bailey take a, sta take a stage knows that he didn't come to that light lightly. So one of his favorite activities was engaging in raku, but building essentially raku machines that will uh, interact with the water, interact with the fire, uh, and perform. And this is taken from a terrific new documentary about Clayton that you can stream on Vimeo uh, by the director Michael Walt. So uh, here's a little performance raku to set us up. We're interested in making an object that combines uh, science and engineering. They're going to perform one time and they're going to destroy themselves in the process. Yeah. I think this is going to be dangerous. Everybody move back about 50 feet. <laughs> Great sound system in here. Put your hands together for Clayton Bailey. So many of you know that last month, Clayton suffered a debilitating stroke. Um, he's lost all ability to speak at the moment, although that's coming back. He's out of the hospital. He's currently in nursing care. And the one thing that his wife, Betty, has said unequivocally is that his humor is 100% still there. So uh, it makes me not worried at all. And in Clayton's honor, I wanted to ask for one final thing, which is uh, how many of you uh, will be teaching any sort of throwing demo in the coming months? Raise your hand. Oh, so good. All right, so Clayton actually took over the Enseca newsletter for a time. And the Enseca newsletter, which you now sort of get as an e-blast, was this incredible repository of Clayton knowledge. And in one of those is Clayton's favorite prank, which is... Uh, so uh, Clayton took a lump of clay and maybe a 10-foot length of small hose, uh, covered the whole thing in clay, and left a tiny bit at the top just about exposed. So in talking about clay and the organic properties of clay, you have to talk up the creepy crawlies that sort of can live within the clay and all of the organic stuff. Then you step to the potter's wheel, start it spinning, and just with the crook of your thumb, get it over the exposed piece of pipe and the snake will fly up out of the potter's wheel. If you want more specific instructions, email me at karth.johnson at asu.edu, but I look forward to seeing and hearing the stories from your throwing demos. 
uh, honorary NSICA member Clayton Bailey, and I'm going to be going to visit him in two or three weeks, uh, and I will be able to convey this award on NSICA's behalf. Thank you.